Hello guys, in this video I will show you a new Laravel package called Laravel Spy, which I noticed recently. The main purpose is to track all outgoing HTTP requests with HTTP client of Laravel and provide the statistics, the dashboard and whatever you want filtered later. So let me show that in action. I've created a demo project with the help of AI. AI, by the way, becomes better and better for creating some demos, some dummy examples and stuff like that. So for example, if you have integration with GitHub or with random other APIs, let me show you how it works. Fetch repos for Laravel. It will just fetch any Laravel repos. In this example, we don't care about the result. We care about the HTTP request being processed. So in the code, in the integration demo controller, we have GitHub with HTTP get, and this is exactly the point of that package. Under the hood, it logs that API call. And then in the database, as a result, we have a database table HTTP logs, and I refresh, and I've tested beforehand. So this is our new entry to the GitHub. We have the status, we have the response, and we have the timestamps. So this is one example, and then another example would be a random dog. This is another API which has status 520. This is interesting. So there's a dog CEO with link. And in this case, we have Cloudflare error 520, which didn't happen to me before while testing. It returned 200 previously, just an hour ago. And this will be great for demonstrating the package in action because external APIs are unreliable by definition. So in the database, we should have a new record, yep, to the URL, and then status 520 with empty response body. And then I have a third example with dummy sign up with post request to some external API. I'm not even sure why it was chosen, maybe as an example of any post request. And I will also show how to hide some sensitive data. So in this case, we have password and token, so secret stuff, and you can hide those from being logged in the database. This is important, but this register post request is kind of also a dummy thing. So we have the result with status 401 return. So this one requires API key, that external API, but it doesn't matter that much in our case. Again, what matters is that it is logged in the database and those status code will be actually shown on the dashboard. So this is where I get to the dashboard part. That package by default comes with the dashboard like this, so there's nothing to configure or create any route. Let me zoom that in and let me refresh the data. So now we have six items in the database and then you can see 200s and 500s and you can filter by period and see some chart with the dates by hour and also see the failures here. You can protect that dashboard with auth or other middleware if you want. This is pretty configurable. So in the .env file, you can provide a lot of parameters, a lot of variables. So enabled true dashboard middleware web, and you can do, for example, web auth like this, comma separated. And now let's talk about those extra features. So I already mentioned the password and secret token as hidden. So if we go to request body here, or you can see that on the right side as well, as you can see, token and password are not saved in the database as plain text. So you provide the list of fields of the inputs to be hidden and then the mask how to hide them exactly. Then this thing is how to exclude the URLs from being logged in the database. So this is get ping, which is response JSON. So this is on the home page. We click ping, we have something. And if I understand correctly, even if in those URLs in the controllers, we have HTTP requests, they will not be logged in the database. Then also you may exclude content types. This is kind of an advanced level. And this is interesting, spy clean days. You may clean those HTTP logs manually or automatically if we take a look at the official documentation. By the way, I didn't mention the installation, but it becomes kind of a standard thing. Compose, require, render, publish, and migrate for a lot of Laravel packages these days. And yeah, if we scroll down to automatic log retention, keep logs for seven days, default is 30, but also you can clean up with artisan command like this or schedule that in console kernel. It was in Laravel 10 since Laravel 11. It is in routes console PHP, but this is how you schedule spy clean, which would clean up the records older than these amount of days, if I understand correctly. 
So yeah, kind of a small package to track HTTP outgoing requests with APIs, including, for example, you can track the AI usage if you have that in your project or any other third-party APIs. And of course, since you have that HTTP logs in the database, you can use HTTP log model from the package to perform any kind of queries with Eloquent or Query Builder or even raw queries. And the final thing in this video I want to mention, during the summer I released this course, which I thought would be pretty important and pretty interesting. Unfortunately, it didn't get that popular, but in seven lessons and video lessons, I tried to show real examples of HTTP client usage with third-party APIs, which don't have official Laravel or PHP packages, with a few examples like Stripe, Cloudinary, Discord, Open Weather, Map, and others. So yeah, if you do use external APIs or planning to, I think it's a pretty important topic and I will link that course in the description below. What do you think about the package? Would you use it in your project or do you use something similar or do you use external tools for logging that? Let's discuss all of that in the comments below. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.